We're going to present an overview of Catherine Kokaba's theory of comfort as part of the Nursing 5120 course, Graduate Nursing Theory. My name is Bo Burton. I'm Sarah McVeigh. And I'm Charlene Sullivan. As an overview of the presentation, we're going to look at Kolkata's background, her practice experiences, and theoretical sources that she used in the development of her theory. We're going to look at the major considerations of theory in regards to nursing. We're going to look at concepts, relationships, and the schematic uh, of her framework. We're going to look at the logical form that Kolkata used in the formation of her theory. We're going to look at how the theory applies to research, education, and practice along with a clinical scenario and how the theory can be applied to it. The presentation will conclude with a summary. Here's a picture of Ms. Kolkaba. Uh, she was born and raised in the Cleveland, Ohio area where she still continues to live and practice. She got a diploma degree in 1965 from St. Luke's Hospital in Cleveland. She worked in med surge, uh, long-term care, and home care. After she finished raising her children, she decided to further her career and she went back to school and in 87 finished with her master's degree from Case Western Reserve University, with a specialty in geriatric nursing. At the same time, she was working as a head nurse on an Alzheimer's unit. As we'll talk further on, you'll see that was a very important part in the development of the theory. After she finished her master's, she continued in school part-time and finished her PhD in 1997. Um, Kolkava developed her theory over a long period of time uh, and it's, she continues to work on it to this day and to develop it. Uh, the comfort theory is a mid-range theory and it's applicable to all areas of nursing. In her book, Kolkaba defines a mid-range theory as not a broad or grand theory which is abstract, but mid-range theories are meant to be grasped and applied. We're going to look at some practice experiences, one that helped her in the development of her theory and two that theory was applied to. She worked in an Alzheimer's unit while she was working on her master's. Uh, she was the head nurse and she noticed that her patients when they were comfortable that there was a reduction in EDs which are excess disabilities or negative behaviors. She also noticed that they were comfortable there were no EDs when they were in their usual routines and there was a lack of ailments or diseases. One uh, practice area where her theory was applied was in pediatric nursing. In pediatric nursing, the original framework um, of comfort was it was the description absence of discomfort or pain in the child. Uh, by applying this theory, their, um, this theory, theory's application was very gratifying to the children and their families. Another uh, practice area is hospice care. And hospice care has always been sort of based on the nurse's intuition and their experience in their, in their practice area. By applying this uh, theory, it resulted in systematic method of measurement um, of comfort for these patients, which resulted in application of correct interventions and achieved comfort in both the patient and the family. Some theoretical sources that were used in developing um, mainly her taxonomic structure were um, uh, for relief, she used Orlando's nursing process theory, and that theory stated that nurses relieve the needs expressed by their patients. For ease, she used Henderson's definition of nursing, and Henderson stated that the 13 um, basic functions of human beings are necessary for homeostasis. Uh, for transcendence, she used Patterson and Zarin's humanistic nursing theory, and that theory stated that patients can rise above their difficulties with the help of their nurses. The empirical evidence um, was presented in Kolkaba's and Steiner's study, uh, and what it did was it tested the four propositions of comfort. Comfort has equal proportions of trait characteristics that comfort is sensitive to changes over time. When exposed to effective interventions, subjects demonstrated differences that increased compared to the control group and total comfort was greater than the sum of its parts. This study also tested the validity of the tools that were used to measure comfort. Catherine Kukaba has many different published articles. Uh, she has a website. She's written a book specific to her theory of comfort, comfort theory. Um, and you'll find that um, these are all usually in nursing journals. Uh, many of them look at things such as the analysis of the word of comfort. 
Um, she has one on the development of the cell grid diagramming types of comfort and context. That's, ones that, that's one that we will review here shortly in our presentation. And also just how um, the evolution of comfort as a theory has changed and how we have to look at and be testing those because healthcare environments actually change. Her website is an interesting thing to look at when you get a chance. It's called thecomfortline.com. It's a great overview. It's actually done by Catherine Kokalba herself um, and one that actually helps in defining and using throughout our practice um, in nursing. In regards to major considerations of nursing theory as part of the nursing meta paradigm, the four concepts, uh, Kolkaba created definitions of her own in relation to um, her comfort theory. She defined nursing as the intentional assessment of comfort needs of patients, families, or communities, and the design of comfort measures to address comfort needs, including reassessment of comfort level after implementation of comfort measures compared to a previous baseline. So initially, nursing, or nursing uh, interventions are successful if they improve the uh, comfort of the patient. The patient is defined as an individual, family, or community in need of health care, including primary, tertiary, or preventative care. The environment is aspects of patient, family, or community surroundings that affect comfort and can be manipulated to enhance comfort. Health is the optimum function of a patient, family, or community facilitated by enhanced comfort. Um, there are seven major uh, concepts that are part of uh, Kolkava's framework and her theory, and we'll identify those but we'll define them later. They are healthcare needs, intervening variables, comfort, health seeking behaviors, institutional integrity, best policies, and best practices. Um, there are four major assumptions that uh, Kolkava presented in various works that she, um, that she wrote. And the four major assumptions to the theory are human beings have holistic responses to complex stimuli. Comfort is a desirable holistic outcome that is germane to the discipline of nursing. Comfort is a basic human need which patients strive to meet or have not met. And enhanced comfort strengthens patients to engage in health-seeking behaviors of their choice. There are three main theoretical assertions and propositions to Kolkava's theory. They are comfort interventions are effective when a recipient experiences an increase in comfort over the pre-intervention baseline. Recipients of increased comfort increase their self help, they increase their health-seeking behaviors and increased participation in health seeking behaviors leads to an increased quality of care. So essentially what happens is with an increased level of comfort, a patient begins to seek out um, health seeking behaviors. They begin to perform things to improve their own health. And in doing so, that requires healthcare organizations to provide better care. In uh, conclusion, we can see that um, the theory is a, indeed a middle range theory that is applicable to uh, almost any level of nursing, any level of care. It gives healthcare providers a guiding framework and a tool to provide for maximum patient comfort and holistic health. The theory of comfort clearly aligns itself with the four components of the nursing meta paradigm, and the theory is simple, easy to understand, and allows students and nurses to apply the theory. The nursing conceptual framework uh, consists of different little circles here and we'll talk about how those are all joined together to define the theory of comfort. Um, you start out with healthcare needs and these are actual deficits that arise from a stressful health situation on the body and they result in illness so you have to take those into consideration. Nursing interventions, that's anything that a nurse is going to do to create an atmosphere of comfort and intervening variables. These are things that you're going to find that you have no control over and that we cannot change. And those may include the already set prognosis of that patient, um, their financial situation, the extent or presence of their family, and even their support. <clears throat> so when you look at these and you put the first three together, you're going to set a goal for enhanced comfort. And once that level of enhanced comfort is achieved, that patient is more likely to participate in health-seeking behaviors. And is seen in physical, socio-cultural, psycho-spiritual, and even environmental. 
So these health-seeking behaviors can be internalized, they can be externalized, and they can even um, produce a goal of optimal wellness, recovery, rehabilitation, um, and even you may have to look at a purposeful or meaningful life and peaceful death, depending on that patient. When you have patients who are seeking healthcare assistance because they've reached a level of comfort and they realize that this stuff really works, you're going to see institutional integrity have to increase with um, best practice um, and best policy. Once there's people seeking health care, we've got to make sure that we are providing a high level of health care in order to help them achieve a goal of um, wellness. The structure that Kolkaba used in her theory was called a taxonomic structure, and this includes four contexts of care to be considered um, when taking care of a patient. This includes physical, this is their body sensation, their homeostatic mechanisms, and their immune response. Psycho-spiritual can include their awareness of self, their self-esteem, their identity, their sexuality, meaning, and the understanding relationship to a higher order of being. Environmental uh, pertains to external background of human experience, and socioculture includes interpersonal, family, and societal relationships. So you, these are used for illustrating the properties of comfort. Comfort is considered an essential goal, um, and it's a set level or outcome for all health care. Comfort can be holistic and is complex, and each aspect of care is represented by a cell uh, in this field. Okay, these become interrelated aspects. Um, when you look at the top three, you have relief, ease, and transcendence. Relief is a state of having a specific comfort need met. Ease is the state of calm or contentment. And transcendence is a state of, in which one is able to rise above a problem of pain. And we will review this as a case study later in the presentation. We're going to look at the uh, logical form that Kokaba used in development of her theory. She used three different methods. She used induction, deduction, and retroduction. Induction is uh, a generaliza generalized induced spe specific observations. Uh, she observed behaviors from her Alzheimer's unit and she was able to um, easily detect a pattern uh, among those behaviors. In deduction, um, it usually proceeds from the general to the specific. And in deduction, she used Murray's theory of human press. She used that as the framework. In retroduction, uh, retroduction usually originates ideas. It's also used when there are few available theories. In outcomes research, um, under the retroduction, um, there, there were very few available theories in outcomes research. Um, but by adding a nursing theoretical framework to her outcomes research, uh, she was able to enhance this area of the nursing um, investigation and the theory-based uh, practice enables nurses to design interventions that are in line with their desired outcomes. Under institutional outcomes, there were very, very, very few theories on institutional outcomes. Um, in the 20th century, institutional outcomes were not really addressed and so she didn't have any information on that. And also there was a strengthening component that was identified in her retroduction. Kolkaba's theory of caring can be used throughout uh, nursing practice in things such as research, education, and practice. And I kind of started from the beginning of where we all started wanting to be a nurse and the concept of caring and making a level of comfort for a patient. In education, a uh, nursing foundation begins with education, so there's early in that learning process, the application of caring is presented. And we all remember back to nursing school, that is your optimal goal, is a level of comfort and wellness for a patient. Once you begin to practice comfort theory as a basis for nursing assessment, therefore ensures the patient's need for relief, ease, and trans transcendence are met. So when comfort is obtained, a patient's own health-seeking behaviors therefore are empowered and result in a positive outcome for them. Later, you have to um, look at research. You have to you know, validate that this is something that truly works and makes a difference. One's level of comfort is always changing and always needs reassessing. Theories have been tested and um, that helps you validate that this is a theory of, that works. A theory of comfort is one that actually helps improve a patient's outcome. Now we're going to look at the implications for practice of um, applying this theory. 
Uh, this theory is applicable to a vast range of nursing practices. If you think about it, comfort is nearly always an element of your patient in every practice. Also, an imp implication of this theory is uh, it promotes health-seeking behaviors. If you think about it, if your patient is comfortable, they're not in any pain, um, everything is right with the world, their environment, their psychosocial, they're probably going to be more apt to participate in those behaviors that would um, improve their stay, uh, decrease the length of time that they're in there, and behaviors outside of that that would keep them from, from being um, sick or um, having ailments. Another uh, really important implication for our practice is this theory states that it is the nurse's responsibility to identify the comfort needs of the patient. And these would be in um, these different areas. They're physical, they're psycho-spiritual, they're socio-cultural, and they're environmental um, areas. If you look here, it's a little tool, uh, the Comfort Daisies. They, are, um, they could be used in pediatrics to help you know, start the uh, dialogue on how they feel that day and be able to help identify those areas where they're having trouble. We're going to look at a clinical scenario um, of a ventilator-assisted patient in ICU and the theory of comfort. We're going to just pick a couple of these to go over. Um, the physical um, area, uh, some relief, uh, things that they might need relief from would be the tube that's uncomfortable in their throat, um, they're unable to self-position, perhaps they're in restraints. Um, the ease or maintenance of that would be um, they would be uh, positioned correctly, um, no skin breakdown because of that. They'd be positioned, you know, hourly every two hours. They would have their pain or their anxiety managed, perhaps with appropriate sedation. And the transcendence of that would be wanting to be extubated as soon as possible and getting through that process. Uh, let's also look at environmental. Uh, relief would be relief from allowed ICU, uh, relief from not having any family at bedside, and perhaps some relief in their, um, their body position or temperature, maybe they're uncomfortable. The ease of that would be a quiet environment, um, perhaps a family member present at the bedside, and reassurance of the nurse that the plan is going as scheduled, that everything is, is, is moving accordingly. And the transcendence of that would be a uh, need for calm and positive environment, you know, actually uh, having that calm and positive environment, having some privacy, uh, perhaps having um, routine hygienic care. Uh, a lot of times when you're in the ICU, you, don't, you are unable to participate in those activities of daily living. So just having um, hygienic routine care would definitely be transcendence. So as you can tell from Charlene's presentation, uh, Kolkava's theory truly is a mid-range theory. And as you can imagine, it is applicable to all areas of nursing practice. Uh, Kolkava stated that comfort for healthcare is the immediate state of being strengthened by having needs for relief, ease, and transcendence addressed in the full context of the holistic human experience. When a patient's comfort is increased, the patient initiates health-seeking behaviors which in turn improves healthcare organizations. Uh, Kolkava con continues to work at this time with the Comfort Line as a consultant, uh, working with various healthcare providers and organizations to promote her theory of comfort, which in turn uh, improves the organization as a whole. Um, this concludes our presentation.